Um, we'll cover this in a second. Uh, let's talk about, before we get to that, let's talk about some other shit because there's still some news. Let's talk about Senator Bernie Sanders. Sanders of Vermont and Senator. Who wrote a book, which means he's a fake socialist. Senator, first of all, welcome. Second of all, uh, your visit comes on a day. We've got some breaking news, some genuine breaking news from Kiev, where President Biden met with Ukrainian President Zelensky this morning. It was Mr. Biden's first visit to Ukraine since the Russian invasion nearly a year ago. And this week, also, Senator Sanders is out with a new book. It's called It's OK to be Angry About Capitalism. Senator, good morning to you. Uh, because of the Ukraine news, before we get to the book, I want to ask about the situation in Ukraine. We're sending a lot of money there uh, at the moment, money generated by our capitalist system. So there is a connection, I suppose. Uh, what needs to happen going forward uh, with U.S. policy toward Ukraine? Well, I'm glad the president is in Ukraine. Uh, what Putin did is outrageous. It is the worst conflict in Europe since World War II. And I think it is important for the United States, NATO, our allies, to tell Putin he's not going to be able to get away with it. And uh, I support what the president is doing. You support what the president is doing. All right, let's talk about the book. It's okay to be angry about capitalism. Why did you think now was the time for this message? And why okay? It seems like you, you feel that there's a degree of resistance to the idea of any criticism of the yeah, Golden Goose. Look, Tony, this country faces enormous crises, and it's important that we have a serious discussion about those crises. Economically, what's going on in America? Simple reality is the people on top, the billionaire class, are doing phenomenally well. Meanwhile, the middle class continues to shrink. And in the richest country in the history of the world, today, over 60% of the American people are living paycheck to paycheck. Virtually every city in this country has a major housing crisis. We are the only major country on Earth not to guarantee health care to all people as a human right, we spend twice as much per capita. Meanwhile, drug companies making billions, the insurance companies making billions, the gap between the rich and everybody else growing wider. We don't talk about those issues. Let's lay it on the table. Let's have that debate. You talk about those issues. You lay them out very well here in the book. And you say things that we had heard from you on the campaign trail many years ago. But I think what the American people struggle with is how do you change a system that appears to be broken in so many ways. Okay. Well, let's put it, that's again, that's a good question. And the answer is, this system is working very, very well for the people who own this network, for the billionaire class. We are involved in class warfare. People right. on top are doing great. So it's not hard to come up with the idea. You want health care for all? Duh, every major country on earth is doing. I live 50 miles away from Canada. You have leukemia, you're in the hospital for a month. You know what your bill is when you get out? Zero. As a nation, they're spending half what we spend yeah. per capita. So you look at taxing Senator. billionaires, for an example, but yeah. what other solutions are you, are you offering? Well, wait, in, in terms of health care, look, just think for a moment. If everybody in America today said, you know what, when I'm sick, my kid is sick, I go to the doctor, I don't have to worry about the bill. All right, you know what that would mean to the health of this country? If people did not have to worry about sending their kids to college and what it would cost them. Yeah. If people didn't see their housing costs. Cost. We yeah. are the richest country in the history of the world. We should be discussing this. Why don't we have health care for all? Why isn't college education, at least public colleges and universities, tuition free? Why do we have a gap? Do you think, does anybody yeah. think, America, three people are more wealth than the bottom half of American mm. society? Anyone think that's appropriate? Let's talk about it. What do we do about it? And, and you're, you're saying that the system is working the way it's intended to work. Exactly. It's working great for the billionaire class. No doubt about it. Now, you introduced a bill last week with Senator Warren um, that would not only extend Social Security but increase benefits. Right. Now, do you believe that by taxing wealthier Americans that you could get some bipartisan support on this bill? We'll see. Uh, but what it... When we talk about the problems of America and why we're not solving them, mm -hmm. please don't forget that this political system is corrupt as well. Mm. All right? So if you are a member of Congress right. and you are put into power by some super PAC owned by a billionaire, uh -huh. you think the first thing you're going to do is say, I think billionaires should pay their fair share of taxes. I doubt it. Mm. So you got a corrupt political Like The way that the interviewer is interviewing him, it just feels like he's... Is he patronizing him? Like, am I crazy? Mm hmm. Uh huh. Like, it just feels weird. Maybe I'm just being parasocial with Bernie. Who knows? Political system. I know that sounds harsh, 
But if super PACs can spend unlimited sums of money, sums of money to beat you, right. is that corrupt? What, what I think your, it is. One of your proposals in here is, is actually to rewrite parts of the Constitution to make changes. But, I, I, you know, the guy at home right now, uh, even the guy not doing well sitting at home, might be saying, yeah, but you're acknowledging that this system we have has created more wealth than any country has ever had in the history. There it is. There it is. No, man. The guy at home right now is not saying that. You're conditioning him to say that. The guy at home is watching and going, honestly? It feels like Bernie is spitting the fucking truth. By the way, this also ties back perfectly to what we were talking about with respect to Noam Chomsky and manufactured consent. This is a self-selecting process. It's a self-eliminating process. You have this motherfucker in this position specifically because he's a dog for the capital owners. He will say the right things. Through the world, tremendous innovation, things you acknowledge in the book. And now you're talking about changing that? I get, you know, or tweaking it. What, Tony, it what, has created enormous wealth for the people on top. You tell me, in this great nation, I grew up in a family that struggled economically. We lived paycheck to paycheck. Why today, in 2023, over 60% of the people living paycheck to paycheck. Mm. Why? Let's talk about where we want to go. And I'll tell you something else that's happening. With all of the artificial intelligence, the robotics are out there. Who's making those decisions whether you're going to have a job or not have a job? Are working people involved then? So all that I'm saying in this book, in that this age, with all of the technology out there, all of the wisdom out there, let's create an economy that works for all, not just the few. I want to ask a question about Jimmy Carter here. Uh, but, you know, on AI, it is current tax policy in this country that yeah. if companies uh, buy an AI system, it's a capital investment, even if it lays off workers, they get a tax benefit. You're it's right. encouraged by the system. I imagine you would want to change that. But we would. You're saying tax robots. That's right. G That's exactly right. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy Carter. Yeah, of course. What, what do you mean? Bro, I hate this shit so much. They would never be this contentious while interviewing a billionaire advocating for lower uh, taxes? Yeah. Jimmy Carter did 9-11. It's true. Uh, just a core of decency and modesty, didn't serve on corporate boards, went back to his hometown, didn't go to live in some giant mansion, didn't give high-powered speeches worth a lot of money, uh, regular guy, not a quote normal guy, seemed like a regular guy uh, in, in real life. Your mem most memorable uh, encounter with him, if you could, sir. Uh, I, everything you said is true. I mean, uh, he was a good president. I think what people will remember him for is what he did after the presidency. He didn't capitalize on being president. He got it on boards. Oh he didn't make God. a whole lot of money. I think he still lives today in the home that he grew up in. All right, bro. You're fucking glazing my man up hard as fuck, okay? Asking is why in the richest country in the history of the world, why aren't, why don't we have a healthcare system that works for all, mm -hmm. where people can walk into the doctor's office as they do in Canada without having to take out their wallet. Why do we spend twice as much per capita on health care? Why do we pay the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs? So we have seen some achievements, but given the scope of the problems and where we should be going, nowhere near enough. We also have one of the most innovative health care systems when it comes to creation of pharmaceutical drugs. You are doing this. No. So when someone hears you lay out the problems with our pharmaceutical industry, as you do in this book, it's say, but the life-saving vaccines, for example, for COVID, they were created by the United States of America. They were created by the pharmaceutical they were created system with by, taxpayer help. Sure. Of course the drug companies produce great drugs. They were created by workers. Shut the fuck up. I hate that. I hate that narrative. It's like, oh, well, these big pharmaceutical corporations created the COVID vaccine. No, they didn't. Workers created that. Your iPhone in your fucking hand, workers made it. Shut the fuck up. Shut up. Drugs, but one out of four people in America cannot afford the pri the drugs that their doctors prescribe. You tell me why we pay ten times more for some drugs that are sold in the United States compared, say, to Canada or to other countries. While year after year, the pharmaceutical industry makes tens of billions. Of
Excuse me. The Pfizer vaccine was not made by Germans. They were made by German Turks, a family, uh, a husband and wife. Okay. Put some respect on it, motherfucker. Not on my watch, pal. Dollars and profits pays their CEOs exorbitant salaries. So, of course, we want the drug companies to do the research and development. Mm -hmm. And by the way, taxpayers of this country spend $45 billion a year. No, they're horrible NIH people. Yeah, I've heard that their own personal politics are not great, though. Moderna and the vaccine. You're talking about Moderna. Pfizer didn't take that Correct. that money, but Moderna, you're you're sharply critical. In fact, you're you're chair of the Senate's Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions Committee. And next month, you're calling in Moderna's CEO to right. testify. They're the owners of the company, bro. What do you mean? They're also the fucking. That's so funny. First of all, they also are like literally the scientists. What do you mean? Pfizer bought their shit. That's it. And also, there was a lot of public funding that went into that, too. Why are you like this? Why? Why are you like this? Why are you like this? Why do you have to, like, be like, oh, well, they were the owners? Yeah, dude, because the fucking Pfizer CEO, whose name you don't even fucking know, is, like, responsible for all of the, the uh, inventions. You know what I mean? Shut up. Pfizer is a sponsor of this channel. Also, Pfizer took the public research. Yeah, BioNTech is the company. That's a very hard right talking point in Germany that Turkish people can't be Germans. Man, shut the fuck up. You know why I said what I said, okay? I know, you, I know you're trying to say that, like, oh, they, you know, Turkish people can't be Germans. They can't integrate. That's not what I'm talking about, okay? The reason why I mentioned that they're Turkish is because I'm proud, okay? I'm proud. Uh, Germans are fucking ridiculous. They just, they are the least humorous people I've ever seen in my entire life. It's just like, it's like an entire nation built on like a uh, rad lib Twitter, but like also obviously not the same politics of rad lib Twitter, but like their understanding of humor is so fucking brutal. Like cost of the COVID vaccine. Well, here's Can the, you stop him from doing that? Well, here's the story. Taxpayers, the NIH co-authored, worked together to create the vaccine. Right. Taxpayers put billions of dollars into the development of the vaccine, guaranteed sales for the vaccine. As they did with many other companies. Yeah. Too. All right. And then what happens after the government stockpile of the vaccine expires, these guys say, well, we're going to quadruple the price of the vaccine. And by the way, in the last two years, the CEO made $5 billion and his other guys made billions of dollars. Is that really what should be happening? Truth is, pharmaceutical industry is enormously greedy, charging us outrageously, uncontrollably high prices. We have got to deal with that. As chairman of the relevant committee, I intend to do what I can. Moderna says it's instituting a patient assistance plan to give the COVID shot to the uninsured and underinsured Americans free of cost. Is that sufficient? And you know, Margaret, for you? amazing coincidence. That happened the same exact day as we announced that we were inviting them to testify. Do you think your political heat made that difference? Well, maybe it was just a wild and crazy coincidence. I don't know. <laughs> but we also want to take a look at what that patient uh, program is about. We're we talking to them about that. But obviously, it's a step in the right direction. Step in the right direction. Um, how do you lower the cost of prescription drugs in a way that doesn't hurt American Good. innovation? And how do you do it politically when Republicans control the House? You know, his, I saw a poll that was done just for Republicans. And you know what Republicans regarded as the major priority they were concerned of? High cost of prescription drugs. Mm -hmm. All right. I love that, like, is, the, is she even talking about the book? Is she promoting the book? Or is she just, like, arguing the sanctity of capitalism towards this, like, old, like, this 800-year-old socialist man who wrote another book about, you should be angry at capitalism, it's okay. Actually, everyone should be angry all the time, sometimes. Meanwhile, she's like, uh, actually, sir, uh, you say you're a socialist, but here you are, uh, you know, uh, on, a, uh, on a very capitalism-defending broadcast. I mean, quite interesting. The entire fucking line of questioning is just, like, attacking him and, uh, and, and everything that he's done or everything that he's accomplished while defending his enemies. And, of course, his enemies are fucking corporations, so then she's just a corporate stooge. It's like so obvious. All right. So I think we have the basis for bipartisan work 
to tell the pharmaceutical industry that they really have got to stop ripping off the American people. A number of ways you could do it. The Inflation Reduction Act started by having Medicare negotiate prices with the pharmaceutical industry. Doesn't kick in for a few years. Yep. I think we should expedite that. Number two, of all people, my good friend Donald Trump, all right, who I disagree with on everything, had the idea that maybe Medicare should not pay prices higher than the average of what countries around the rest of the world are paying. That's a good idea, and we want to pursue that uh, as well. Uh, and there's the concept of reimportation. She's about to get real German with it. She's about to get real German with it and be like, uh, you just said, my dear friend Donald Trump, which means you're not being sarcastic. It's not allowed. You, oh, you said it. You, you're also defending the Donald Trump, who everyone knows is the worst, is the worst president in the United States of America history. No jokes. Nine. I don't allow it. That if you, if Americans can buy drugs in Canada or in Europe at a fraction of the price, let's have pharmacists and distributors be able to purchase those drugs and sell them at much lower cost in the United States. This involves state stop subsidies of some form. It, it, government subsidies. No, that does not involve subsidies. Okay. That simply says if you can buy a drug in Canada, same drug for one tenth of the price, passes FDA st uh, specifications, it should be sold in this country at a lower price. And you think you can do this with Republicans in control of the House? There's do you think the votes are there? I think there's a lot of support for dealing with the high cost of prescription drugs. Yes, I do. Uh, I want to ask you about what's politically possible um, in that makeup of Congress right now. Democrats have this narrow 51 seat majority in the Senate. You're an independent, but you caucus with the Democrats. Both of Pennsylvania senators are out of office right now dealing with serious health issues. And oh, so God. their absence complicates any votes. Do you have any idea when, for example, Senator... <laughs> It's like you're responsible for John Fetterman being out of office. How can we make John Fetterman uh, being in the hospital about Bernie Sanders? Jesus fucking Christ, dude. How can I use anything and everything against Bernie Sanders in this regard? Like, top of the hour ad break is here. Obviously, this is Bernie's fault. Like, well, fear not. Bernie also knows you can avoid the top of the hour ad break by subscribing for $5, I'm once again telling you that you can avoid the top of the hour ad break by subscribing for $5 all for free with a Twitch Prime or by getting gifted a sub. That's right. Here's the three-minute ad break now. Senator Fetterman will be out of the hospital and, and well, well enough to return. Uh, we wish Senator, Senator, Senator Fetterman has gone through a hell of a year I mean, with his stroke in the middle of a campaign and dealing with other issues. So I can't answer that. I think Bob Casey, who is dealing with prostate cancer, will be back, as I understand it, in early March. This is a big what if. I mean, this is a very key state, Pennsylvania. Sure. Is it possible to talk to you on Are Discord? You no. Well, obviously, we're concerned no. about the health of all of our members, and we hope that they are all back. Bob, I think, will be back. We know that. John, I'm, I just don't have that information. Mm -hmm. um, what does this have to do with the book or capitalism? Now she just moved on from that to be like... like she's about to be like, deforestation is happening in, uh, in, in Brazil. Why is it your fault? Because Pennsylvania, in so many ways, also uh, is an example of a lot of what you talk about in, in terms of the working class, yeah. mixing with you know um, the concerns you have there. Are, are you concerned that that state is, if if in, there has to be a, a special election, for example, or well, if Casey we, let, doesn't run, not, that it goes to the Republicans? Bob will be back in in a, in a few weeks. Okay. But so let's not speculate on it. But you know, like Pennsylvania, like Vermont, like other countries, like other states in our country. Uh, the people in those states are hurting. And the question of the book, again, is that how come we have so many people who are struggling, we have a dysfunctional health care system, our child care system is in disarray, we got millions of elderly people who have nothing in the bank mm -hmm. as they face retirement, and yet the people on top are doing phenomenally well. Mm -hmm. And Margaret, what the book is about is saying that we have more income and wealth inequality today than we've ever had. We have more concentration of ownership 
in sector after sector than we have ever mm -hmm. had. We have a political system which is increasingly corrupt because as a result of Citizens United, billionaires can put enormous amounts of money into it yeah. to elect their candidates. And we have, you know, eight major media conglomerates, corporate media conglomerates that control about uh, about what 90 percent of the American people see, hear and read. Those are really issues that we need to discuss. That's what the book does. Do you worry when you talk about the corporate media that you are targeting journalists when no. you say that? No. Donald Trump talks about fake news and that's. Yeah, no, it's it's true. No, it's the same. He's just the same as Donald Trump. Let's not ever fucking ask. Why people also agree with Donald Trump and how Donald Trump is able to weaponize the distrust that people have in mainstream media. There are valid ways to criticize mainstream media and mainstream news. And then there are ways that Donald Trump weaponizes the valid distrust that some people have for nefarious right-wing reactionary purposes. It's awesome. It's great. This kind of narrative basically also just ends up doing nothing but positioning yourself against someone who is otherwise trustworthy. Okay. Bernie Sanders is a trustworthy figure. He has consistently been the most popular senator in Congress by the widest of fucking margins. When you turn around and try to like belittle him this way, a lot of people go, oh yeah, here, here's mainstream media again, doing fake news again, attacking this dude, which we like. We don't like mainstream media, but mainstream media does not have the capability of understanding anything outside of their fucking little eco chambers. Okay. Or echo chambers. I said echo chamber. Fuck, I did it again. Where they think like, oh, well, our wealthy watchers are professional managerial class watchers. The wealthy people that watch us are sponsors or corporate benefactors. They don't like this guy, so we don't like this guy. We can say whatever the fuck we want. Simply to deflect attention from the fact that he's a pathological liar. My experience one-on-one -on -one with media, they work hard, they... Very rarely am I misquoted. But what I am talking about, Margaret, is that corporate media limits the kind of debate that we have in this country. Mm -hmm. You tell me. You know more about it than I do. How often do we talk about income and wealth inequality? We're talking about right now, Senator. Yeah, but how often? Not everybody is Bernie Sanders on your show. <laughs> how often do you talk about concentration of ownership? How often do you talk about the fact that we are the only major country on earth not to guarantee health care at all, mm -hmm. and yet we spend twice as much money? How often do you talk about... Talk about Ohio, be like Ohio's deregulation and how, you know, the government lobbied for it. There's only one fucking panel that talked about it, and it was Chris Hayes. Other than that, and he barely even alluded to it. Other than that, like, nobody fucking talked about, about it. About that if somebody has a baby in Finland, they're getting nine months off or ten months off paid family leave. I will talk to you about paid leave for families uh, any day of the week. They also have, like, a 56% tax rate in Finland, though. It's a very different system. But, Good, but let's yeah. talk about it. What do they okay. get for that? They get free health care, right? Mm -hmm. Free higher education? That yeah, of course. I, I wonder what, how much she makes. That's the funniest part. Like, ultimately, she probably, she makes an unimaginable amount of money, okay, in comparison to the average worker. Like, 100%. And she's like, oh, 56%, that's a lot. First of all, first of all, that is a misunderstanding of how that works. It's probably the top marginal tax rate that she's referencing. Um, and that is, again, that doesn't mean automatically they take 50% of your entire tax. Like, that's not how this works. So why the fuck is everyone talking about this? I feel like nobody understands how, how tax rates work. Like, no, no one understands it. Or rather, people purposely advance the misinformation deliberately. That's yeah. the kind, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's the debate I want, and that's the debate we really don't have on the corporate media. So, President Biden talks about um, finishing the job and the potential for running for re-election in 2024. You said you won't run if he runs. Do you believe that President Biden will face any primary challenge from the left, from the progressive wing? I can't speak for other people. I think there's a general consensus right now uh, that uh, President Biden has done not everything we would like. He has done uh, a good job. And again, I can't speak for anybody else. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I have said is if he runs, now since that he's going to run, I will support him. Do you see anyone who would challenge him? Can't speculate. Um, as you write in your book that the essence of the, you're very harsh on Democrats, <laughs> but you say uh, the essence of the Democrats. Worse on Republicans, though. Let's 
<laughs> you write, the essence of the Democratic message in recent years has been, we're pretty bad, but Republicans are worse, so vote for us. Is there anyone inspirational in Democratic politics? Sure, there's some great people who are working night and day to protect working class people. But the thesis of that particular chapter is that working class people are responding to the Republicans, yeah. not because they want to cut Social Security and Medicare and give tax breaks to the rich. It's they have heard Democrats say for years that they are the party of the working class. And then uh -huh. people are saying, really, I can't afford health care. I can't afford prescription drugs. I can't afford to send my kid to college. The more he's right, the more they bully him, dude. It's crazy. As your Biden assigned IRS agent, I can confirm people don't understand taxes. Even accountants don't understand it. There's a reason there's a niche in t accounting field that deals with taxes. So who's the next Bernie Sanders? Who is that voice? Well, I'll let you Bernie? discover that. I don't... <laughs> but I will tell you, and we talk about this as well. Her net worth is $8 million, broke boy. WealthyPeepo.com is such a funny name for one of these types of websites, by the way. That makes sense. She makes 300 grand and her net worth is 5 million. How the fuck? She worked on Bloomberg, CNBC, NBC News. Made quite a fortune over the course of her career. Brennan is of Irish descent. She went to Covenant Sacred Heart in Greenwich, Vin Greenwich, uh, Connecticut. Wait, isn't that like the the? Isn't this like the fucking crazy school that everyone goes to? All the rich people go to. She went to University of Virginia. Maybe I'm misunderstanding it. Foreign Affairs, Middle Eastern Studies, a minor in Arabic. Is that the? Is that the fucking super weird like? Check how much you think you're worth. I don't fucking know how much it is, but is this the one? Wait, 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 wait. Notable alumni, Caroline Kennedy, Olympic swimmer. Uh, no, this isn't the one I was thinking of. No, never mind. Oh, Lady Gaga went there. I, it's another one of these, but it's not the one that I was thinking of. Uh, what is it like the one that Obama's daughters went to or some shit? That's the one I thought. Um. To the beach that makes you old. You went to the what? The beach that. This is so stupid. You're looking at. Oh, that's a New York City school, maybe. Oh, no, this is the New York City version. This is not the one that. Is this the one? No, this isn't the one. We're talking about we're talking about uh We're talking about Sidwell friends. Oh, okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, I was thinking about this one. Uh it's in Maryland anyway. Okay, I I'm, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. This is irrelevant. Uh let's get back to the interview. Look, what I am extremely proud of is that there are more really strong this young a... progressives, often people of color in the house now than probably in no, any this time, is not the, certainly this is in my life, some school. great people. Uh, and, and that is, you know, if you ask me what my, mm -hmm. I'm most proud of is that so many young people, we won the young vote overwhelmingly. Mm -hmm. And I think young people are saying, we don't want to tinker around the edges anymore, not on climate change, not on racial issues, not on economic issues. We want transformational change. And if my campaign's played a role in changing that consciousness, I'm very proud of that. You are up for re-election to the Senate in 2024. Yeah. Can you take the wins that you have had in shaping the Democratic platform as you have with the issues that you have raised um, and walk away with that win? Or, or do you feel you need to run again? I think, look, I, you know, in my chapter on the media, what I talk about is media is very interested in elections and elections. I, I was elected. Like this question. I was elected to do a job and I'm working yeah. really hard as chairman of this committee. People back home are not asking me whether I'm going to run. They say, Bernie, we can't afford health care. We can't afford prescription drugs. Do something. Let me focus on that. 
So you don't feel like you have a, a, a ticking clock here no. for 2024 right it has to yep. get all this done? Between me and the people of Vermont, and uh, we have plenty of time. Um, former Ambassador Nikki Haley is running for president, as you know, and she said there should be a mandatory mental competency test for politicians older than 75. You're 81. Do you take offense <laughs> at that? What did she mean? Do I don't think? understand what you was. <laughs> God, he's so sick. God damn it. I, I do agree with that. Bernie would fucking nail that mental competency test. Not sure about Joe Biden. But I love him so much. God, I'm such a fucking stan, dude. How can you not love this fucking guy? Who He's just given his entire life to the goddamn cause, dude. Holy fuck. He's such a silly, he's such a silly Billy, too. Oh, I am old. What do you mean? Yeah, no, no, I think that's absurd. You know, there's a level. Absurd. Yeah, it, you know. I don't think it's absurd. He should just be like, yeah, I'll do a mental competency test. I'll show people I'm mentally capable. Racism, we're fighting sexism, we're fighting homophobia. I think we should also be fighting ageism. No, Bernie, No. Oh, God, it's hard. It's hard. He is old. He's very old. Trust people, look at people, and say, you know, this person's competent, this person's not competent. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of 40-year-olds out there who ain't particularly competent. <laughs> <laughs> Older people. Are. You know, you look at the individual. I don't think you make a blanket statement. Okay. So when it comes... If Bernie was more of a charismatic person, which unfortunately he is not, he's a very kind person, he's a very wonderful person, but he's, like, not the most charismatic person, he would turn around and be like... Marjorie Taylor Greene is 43 years old. Do you think she's competent? I think not. You know what I mean? Like, that kind of thing, you know? Comes to the current. I, I do think that mandatory tests for anyone over the age of fucking 60, I'm on board, baby, let's do it. President or the former president in their age range. It doesn't should be a senator you. forever. I don't Look give a shit. He's charismatic. Do, How dare you? Believe he is charismatic, mm -hmm. but he's not like... For? What is that? He's not like Trump level fucking sassy. You know what I mean? And Americans love that shit. If he was more of like a, if he had a bit more Al Franken in him, you know what I mean? If he was like, if he was a little bit more sharp and witty and sassy, but he's like too nice to do that. You know what I mean? Americans love sassy bitches. I mean, Trump is a perfect representation of this, you know? Even Obama, actually, you know what? Obama is a great example of this. Obama was sassy as fuck. I agree, and we need a sassy left for sure. The Corbin Bernie route is too nice. Got to be meaner for sure. Yeah. Americans are fucking angry. Like, show, channel that anger and frustration at the right avenues, at the right villains, for the right reasons, and do it in a fucking sassy way. Obama's sassiness made a president? Yeah. What does Trump stand for? Do you believe in that? Well, I certainly don't. What does Joe Biden stand for? What is he doing? Has he accomplished? Look at, look at him in that way, not on age. You say in the book that Democrats are wrong to suggest that former President Trump supporters are racists, sexists, and homophobes, that they're deplorable. You point out these so-called racists, many of them, voted for Barack Obama, but their lives didn't improve. Do you think that the Democratic Party messaging is just entirely wrong-headed to frame this as a, a broader moral issue? Look, this is like probably is, uh, I know what he's trying to say here. I know what he's trying to do here. Okay. I think the best messaging in this situation is just, you know, if you're running for president, you got to say it. Ultimately, it's just like, you know, we are living in a racist country. You can't really say that if you want to run for president. Okay. And ultimately, for that reason, like I, as a white person, it's much easier for me to say this, but I'm very understanding of social conditioning. That's why I think I can do a decent job at like, you know, changing the social conditioning that people have underwent that made them who they are. You know what I mean? Hassan, you ain't white, dude. Okay, I don't care, okay? I, I am. You can say you aren't white all day, every day. It doesn't matter. I, I have white skin, and I have a lot of white mannerisms. To the outside world, before they fucking find out my name is Hassan, people think I'm white, okay? I have a lot of privilege for that reason. I don't know if you're saying this in a, in a way that you think, like, helps me, helps my background or whatever. But ultimately, that's the truth. You know what I mean? I am. I'm white as fuck. 
in the sense that like I have a, a lot of white privilege. I'm also classified as white by the U.S. Census, but ultimately, you know, might be a bit of a, you know, spicy aioli, but ultimately I'm still pretty fucking white. Haha, uh-huh, you a milkman. Exactly. And by white, I mean, whiteness is defined by your proximity to blackness. Why do you want to be white so bad? I don't care about it. I'm Turkish. So for me, the white black concept is just, it's irrelevant. It's not something I grew inside of. It's just something I say. It's something I say regularly because, like, like I mentioned, whiteness is about your proximity to power. Whiteness is about your proximity to blackness, okay? And as far as my proximity to blackness, I'm fucking super far away. You know what I mean? It's just the truth. So ultimately... Ultimately, it's ridiculous for me to act like I'm a person of color. You know what I mean? I'm not. I live a life that is very privileged. It's one that I recognize, and it's one that I use to my advantage. People perceive you as white in America, so that's why you are until people racialize you. Exactly. It's true. It's true. White people who claim 3% Native American probably have a hard time for you calling yourself white. I mean, yeah, it's just... It's true. The Muslim name does part... The Muslim name part does affect your privilege? Yeah, but, like, not that much. You know what I mean? Maybe I'm a bit slow. Could you explain whiteness is about your proximity to blackness? Yes. The concept of whiteness as a political formation, because it is a social concept, was originally created around not fair skin necessarily, but I guess fair skin was the best indication for it, but around the one drop rule. However many drops of black blood you had in you would show how much of a person of color you were and how non-white you were. That's why there's like old school, super crazy, super racist classifications of black people. Like uh, I'm going to use a term here that uh, is an ancient old racist term, which was ironically still used in Virginia, in the state of Virginia. Not that long ago, but uh, uh, Octo Rune, for example. Um, it, this is like, that's how fucking, that's how far the shit went. White people were real nerdy about making sure... White people were real nerdy about making sure they calculated and documented how much um, uh, how, how much black someone had in them. So Mexicans who didn't mix with black people were white. Don't let the white skins know. Wait, I mean, there are a lot of white Mexicans. What do you mean? So... Anyway... Depending on who you're talking to and how racist they are, you know, even Slavs are not white, technically, right? Whiteness is an ever-expanding concept. It's just about who's in power, and uh, it's no longer just like Anglo-Saxon Protestants, you know what I mean? Which it was originally, as it was originally in America. Benjamin Franklin famously thought the Germans and even uh, Scandinavians to be too swarthy or uh, non-white. Think about that. He only considered the French to be white because he wanted to get some French pussy. And barely. It's true. It's also famously so. Look it up. So, that's, that's still... That's still a concept that runs in society to this day. Anyway. Yes, they had it based on your percentage of blackness. Yes, exactly. So... 
So that's the reason why I say I am white. I don't think I have the same belief system that a lot of white Americans do, a lot of white Westerners do. But here in the United States of America, the way I present myself and the way people perceive me until they find additional things about me is white. It's just the truth. And for that, I get a lot of privilege. If a cop can talk to me, without immediately perceiving me as a threat until they see my license and change their attitude, which is definitely something I experienced a lot um, in the past 10 to 12 years that I've lived in this country. Ultimately, the, the you know, majority of people look to me and, and think that I'm white. Yeah, I passed the Family Guy color test, even though I technically don't pass it with the TSA. <sighs> are there, it, are there supporters yeah. of Trump who are racist, sexist, homophobes? Absolutely. But to paint a broad brush and say, well, that's the reason that they don't vote for the Democrats. That is really wrong. Look, I've been all over this country. I have worked with trade unionists, people on strike, people who had the courage to stand up for economic injustice. Yes, Mrs. Faze, look up Benjamin Franklin Swarthy, and you will find more about this. Great people. And I talked to the union leaders, oh, 70% of our people are Republican. Why is that? Because I think they have lost faith My that the believes, Democratic Party yeah, is going to stand up and fight for them. And they say, look, Democrats told watch the Watch the video I did on white people do not exist. And I think it's 15 minutes, super short. And I, and I go through the history of whiteness, what it means, what the contemporary implications are. I mentioned pretty much everything I just mentioned and a lot more in that video. You can go check that out. And it'll give you a better understanding of what I mean. Talk they don't accomplish... Oh, I want to vote for Trump. Maybe I mean, you blame something. Democrats going back to Bill Clinton for signing on to NAFTA. You blame Barack Obama. That's right. you, you're critical of Joe Biden as well here. That's right. All right. In other words, what I have said over and over again, working class people, in my view, are not responding primarily, there are other reasons, to the Republican message because they want to cut Social Security, Medicare, and give tax breaks to billionaires. That's not why working class people are voting for them. If the Democrats, in my view, had an agenda that says, we know that your kid can't afford to go to college. And that's why we're going to make higher education or public colleges and universities tuition free. We know you can't afford childcare, outrageously mm -hmm. expensive. We're going to work on that. We know we're the only country in the world not to guarantee health care is right. You pass a Medicare for all single payer program, you expand Medicare to cover dental, hearing, and eyeglasses. Democrats ain't going to lose an election for a long, long time. But which Democrat would take that vote? I mean, you, you have said Medicare for all. You, you can't pass in the current Congress. Yeah, but is it a popular issue? I have to take on the whole bloody insurance industry, the drug industry, and yet we still have tens of millions of people who understand that Medicare for all is right. If we had a united Democratic Party saying, yeah, we have the guts to take on the powerful special interest, they could win that fight yeah. and be in. Look, FDR did it in the 30s. He won four elections because he had the guts to stand up to powerful special interests and say, you know what, I'm on the side of the working class. You look at the map of this country, though, and Democrats have lost that, you know, other than the coast, there are huge swaths yes. in rural America. Yes. What is it about rural America that the Democrats do not understand? These are white working class people who do not believe that the Democrats are standing up and fighting for them. All right, and what we need to do Oh, the thing I was going to say about Bernie Sanders, fuck, I totally forgot. But, yeah, I do think that, I do personally think that, uh, like, I don't know if he'll say it or not, whatever. Uh, or I don't know if he believes it or not, but it, I do think that most Americans, as a consequence of their social conditioning, do have a lot of resentment and animosity towards black people. 
This even includes black Americans as a consequence of our culture, as a consequence of stereotyping, as a consequence of our educational system. Okay? It's just straight up true. Okay? And for that reason, a lot of Americans are motivated by white supremacy, whether they realize it or not. This is a hard conversation to broach. And depending on what group I'm talking to, I often won't say this out loud. I say it here because I do believe it. And for that reason, I also believe that, you know, you can and should be a little bit more empathetic to people who just learned that behavior. Okay? Because sometimes they can turn around and, and change that and, and unlearn that shitty behavior. I'm not like the uh, Syra Raicho, or uh, is that how you say her name, type person who's like going to do $5,000 a pop meals to get white ladies to fucking uh, listen to me tell them that they're racist or whatever. But no, it's not even shitty parents. No, no, no. I don't think people learn racism through their parents. I mean, they certainly learn it through their parents as well, but I don't think that's the only place they learn uh, uh, racism from. They learn it from every facet of society. That's why there are liberal spaces where liberals say, uh, Sarah Rio, sorry, not Sarah Rachik. Sarah Rio is who I was thinking of. Okay, it's not just that. All of our institutions have a lot of white supremacist coding. Everybody loves the police. The police, as a, as a foundational principle, were there to protect the interests of capital. And in many instances, you know, capital meant black people. Policing as an institution still, when you defend it, you're technically still defending a white supremacist system. Criminal justice system is white supremacist, both in its outcomes and in its inception, and also in the way that it doles out punishment disproportionately. Okay? But because it's such a permanent fixture of society and because you can't really live without some system, some organizational tool of policing and some kind of criminal justice system, which I'm never going to fucking advocate for the abolition of the criminal justice system. Obviously, I understand that it's a necessity for a society to exist. People don't even make that, uh, com people don't even make that, uh, that, that, connection in their minds they just think like this is a normal part of process what do you mean so a lot of people learn uh white supremacist attitudes a lot of people learn white supremacist attitudes even if they are not like outwardly racist plenty of people are not outwardly racist and plenty of people don't even realize that they have some uh resentments some animosity this is why it's a very difficult conversation to broach it's also one that is impossible to have on social media. It's impossible to have it on Twitter, for example. Does that make sense? You know? So are you racist as well? I don't think so. But every now and then I might have a, I might have a thought or some shit like that where... Uh, it, it would, I would not have a similar approach or opinion towards a white person. Everyone does. I'm not a racist person, but of course I have blind spots. Everyone has blind spots. It's not an invasive or intrusive thought. That's not it. That's not the truth. It's one that you don't think about. Does that make sense? The racism is okay when it comes to white people. Got it. What? First of all, I didn't even say that. But also, come on, you've been in here for 31 months. Go watch the fucking YouTube video and then come back to me, okay? If you're going to still have this take. Because that's not my take. Whiteness as a concept is fundamentally about having power. There's no such thing as a non-racist. There's only racist or anti-racist. I, I agree with that. They're trolling because they're bored? Yeah. 
There are examples of you making fun of poor people. I mean, I make fun of poor people all the time. What do you mean? I make fun of everybody. I make fun of dumbasses. If someone is poor and they're being a dumbass, I'm not going to fucking sit there and be like, oh, they're a poor person, so I'm not going to make fun of them. You know what I mean? I don't think there is any kind of shelter, especially given, like, what they're saying. If I'm making fun of someone, I'm making fun of someone because they are, you know, behaving in an erratic manner. Does that make sense? Poor for them being poor? Yeah, I don't know about that. I would go ahead. I would assume that that's your own assessment of that. That's something I think about a lot. <sighs> you did say you don't want blind people to have guns or drive. That's true. I am ableist. Make fun of me, daddy. Okay, Blastoise. Anyway, let's continue. Is have a movement of black workers, Latino workers, white workers, gay workers, straight workers, and understand that we're all in this together. I don't care if you're living in rural Iowa, where I spent a lot of time. Mm -hmm. All right, You can't afford health care. You can't afford to send your kid <sighs> to college. Or you're living in San Francisco. So too often we forget about the economic issues that unite us. The vast majority of the people know the pharmaceutical industry is ripping us off. The vast majority of the people understand that we have to improve our educational system. Let's work on that. Are you going to campaign for Joe Biden if he runs for president? Because, I mean, you, you just laid out that what he's done is nice, but it's not sufficient to raise all the issues that well, you just laid well, out. It's a little premature to talk about a, a campaign that isn't. We happening. talk about it all the time. <laughs> that hasn't been announced yet. We'll see. Well, he says he's deciding and could be deciding soon. Well, and after that, and he and I will talk and we'll see what we'll do. And you want to shape that. But the I did. Look, you know, I, when he was running, it, to mm -hmm. me, it was extraordinarily important uh, that uh, Trump be defeated. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, to his courage, what Biden did after the election, sat down with our people, campaigns came together, he came up with some pretty progressive ideas. Um, I want to ask you about some issues on foreign policy. CIA director Bill Burns uh, recently said that the uptick in violence in Israel and, and Palestinian territories reminds him. Well, this is where he pops off. Oh, come on, Bernie, spit. Of the last intifada, that there could be an explosion of violence. Israel now is the most right-wing government it's had in years. Do you um, think that Democracy is in peril in Israel right now. I do. I am very worried about uh -huh. what <laughs> Right now. <laughs> Man, democracy in Israel is, is a funny concept. You know, for who is the question you got to ask. You know what I mean? It's an apartheid state. That's crazy to be like, oh, like democracy in South Africa is in peril is a lot of what a lot of people are saying. It's like, yeah, no shit. It just like kind of didn't exist. Democracy for who? Who has democracy? In Israel, because it's certainly not the fucking Palestinians. You know what I mean? They got nothing. Netanyahu is doing, and some of his allies. It's just that uh, the fascism is a is a self destructing cult. So ultimately, yes, a lot of the uh, <laughs> a lot of the the psychopaths want to eviscerate the Palestinians. Will then often turn around and. Literally fucking uh, do the same undemocratic shit to their own chosen people as well. It's the same as Americans, man. Americans, conservative Americans and psychotic right-wing Americans literally fucking end up harming white people, white working class people that they claim to care about. They don't give a shit. In government. I want to know where this fucking guy is. I thought he was going to give me the whole, like, you, you hate, uh, you hate poor people thing. And what may happen to the Palestinian people. And let me tell you something. I mean, I haven't said this publicly, but I think the United States gives billions of dollars. I'm here, in hostile Israel. rock. All right, give and me I the think Jews. We've got to put some strings attached to that. And so oh my God, you're fucking asshole. 
His example was I was making fun of Android users, bro. I thought he was being serious. You fucking dipshit. Yeah, if you're an Android user, you deserve to be made fun of. Okay, there you go. I said it. I'm an iPhone supremacist, bitch. <laughs> He's a, a large number of them black and brown people. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Get out of here with your fucking green bubbles, bitch. iPhones are the Tesla of phones. I no, I don't really care. I have fun going somewhere, not being able to find a suitable charger, bitch. I mean, at this point, like, you know, it's the same shit. What, you think there's more Android chargers everywhere? What? That's so stupid. We're not doing this. We're not doing this conversation. It's so dumb. It's so stupid. They're both expensive, okay? They're both made by capitalist corporations want to suck you dry. Shut the fuck up. I know. I know the Apple features are bullshit. It doesn't matter. I literally don't care. Government, you cannot turn your back on the two-state solution. You cannot demean the Palestinian people there. You just can't do it and then come to America and ask for money. Has the administration, have you talked to the administration no. about it? They've been very careful Are, in criticism yeah. of the Netanyahu government. Well, I, I, I am not careful about it. Uh, I'm embarrassed that, that in Israel you have a government of that nature right now. And are you going to introduce something? We may well, yes. To try to attach strings, strings look, to USA. You cannot Asia. give, if you have a, you know, whether it's Saudi Arabia or other authoritarian societies, If a government is acting in a racist way and they want billions of dollars from the taxpayers of the United States, I think you say something. The most anti-Semitic thing you can say is compare Israel to Saudi Arabia. In the eyes of the media, they're like, whoa, Saudi Arabia is bad. They're our allies. We'll always defend them. But we know they're bad because they're Muslim. You know, Just fucking calm down. Okay, calm down. How dare you? How dare you, sir? You just made a comparison that I find to be very, very unacceptable. Asada Arabia. Yep. Sorry, that's not acceptable. You want our money? Fine. This I got to pee. I'll be back. Get it. The pro-Israel lobby, APAC, used to be bipartisan. But these days, um, it's got a super PAC that has spent very heavily in Democratic primaries. You Against said, progressives. You said they're doing everything they can to destroy the progressive movement in this country. Do you think the politics around this issue are constraining the White House going into 2024? The way I look at APAC now in terms of their political activities is it's not even just the pro-Israel group. This is a corporate PAC, sometimes getting money from Republicans, sometimes supporting extreme right-wing uh, Republicans. Uh, so what really upset me very much is that in many of these primaries, we had great candidates, young people, often people of color, And you had APAC and other super PACs spending millions of dollars trying to defeat them. And as you may know, I try to get the Democratic Party to pass a resolution that in Democratic primaries, super PAC money should not be allowed to be used. Mm -hmm. Do you think that this is what's constraining the Biden White House right now, the concerns about the politics around this domestically? Look, bottom is line is what constrains any president is we have a corrupt political system in which big money plays an enormous role. And right now, you know, if I run for re-election, you know, people want to spend, some billionaire wants to spend millions of dollars against me, perfectly legal to do so. That constrains all politics in America. If you run for re-election to the Senate, so you are considering it? Sure, I'm considering it, but I haven't made any decision. Um, you are, when you talk about American workers, you're proposing a new cabinet-level agency to focus on the future of work and yeah. workers. You talk about taxing robots who might replace humans. Isn't the Labor Department supposed to be doing these things? Well, theoretically, but I don't think we're doing enough. Look, this is a huge issue. <clears throat> There is a revolution taking place now with artificial intelligence and robotics, okay? Mm -hmm. Millions of workers are going to lose their jobs. Who's making those decisions, Why? You hear it debated in Congress? I don't. This part is so important. A lot of people don't understand what he's saying here, but he's talking about, like, basically the government offering, like, a patch, right? It's not the best provision, but it's the best one he can advocate for. 
But what the, the theory behind what he's saying is what's significant here. Workers are not making this decision to cut the labor force and, and put in, implement artificial intelligence in their, in their stead, right? That is the true problem. That is, at the, that, that is the real issue here. The real issue is that, like, it's not like workers are the ones who are making this decision. If the workers were the ones who were making the decision, they would probably make the decision to cut work hours, right? Still maintain the same pay, or maybe even a larger percentage of the fucking profits that the artificial intelligence would be creating. But because it's the capital owners themselves who make this decision, they do it at the behest of what they call efficiency. What that means is cutting the workforce down as best as they can, giving the remaining workers more of a workload while maintaining the productivity at a similar level because the AI is there to improve productivity. It's not there to improve the workers' conditions. That is the problem with AI and automation. Not necessarily that like it exists. It's a good thing. This is something I talk about a lot. Like, the wheel was not invented to make someone money. The wheel was invented, and it was truly a good thing, right? It moved humanity forward. It, it, and artificial intelligence is similar. Unfortunately, though, it's created under the conditions of capitalism. And therefore, just like every other type of innovation... It works to make workers more productive. That doesn't necessarily mean it's a good thing for the workers, ultimately. As a matter of fact, in many instances, it's a bad thing for the workers because they just do more output. They do more, and they get paid the same. That's why productivity has skyrocketed with uh, cell phones. People are on 24-7 at their jobs. And yet, for some reason, wages have remained stagnant in comparison to the productivity. Why? Because profit rates are declining, and you have to make up for that. Because you have to constantly, endlessly look for growth. You have to constantly grow your business. You have to constantly seek more and more profit year over year. That's how it works. All right. So guys who sit at the head, often guys of large multinational corporations are saying, look, we can do this, we can get rid of all these people over here, we can make even more money. So we're talking about a transformational moment throughout the world in the United States. I want working people to be involved. And if we come up with a technology, I'm not anti-technology, if there is a technology that can do increased worker productivity, who benefits from that? Just the guy who owns the company, or does the worker benefit? So if we can reduce the work week, is that a bad thing? It's a good thing. But I don't want to see the people on top simply be the only beneficiaries of this revolution. He's right. And of course, the only current solution to that is a social democratic solution. You know what I mean? This is why I love Bernie, though. Like, he has a good way of, he has a good way of describing these things in a way that's, like, super palatable. And in spite of, like, you know, an incredible amount, a billion, multi-billion dollar industry routinely up his, crawling up his ass and looking at every little microaggression that he's engaged with and using it and weaponizing it against them, he still is able to maintain his voice and he is still able to, I guess he's still perceived as an honest figure for the most part. Probably one of the most popular socialist politicians on the planet, I would say, as it stands currently. Obviously, I'm not talking about like Xi Jinping and shit. Like, you know, most popular... Uh, socialist politician in a in a western liberal uh country <sighs> technology so you agree with bill gates and taxing robots that's one way to do it yeah, I absolutely. Wasn't saying, He's a billionaire, I'm not saying do. whether Xi is a, a socialist or not. That's not what I don't like. misunderstand me. He's, <laughs> I've <laughs> talked to Bill on a number of occasions, yes. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, well, I, I'm interested in that concept and, and some of the other things you lay out here. Well, including... you know, it, it's not just taxing the robots, it's this yeah. whole question of an economic transformation. Are working yeah. class people going to benefit from that or just the billionaire class? 
You also talk about a new deal for journalism and rethinking of the role of public and community media in the United States. You're very harsh on, on the media, as we talked about, including you mentioned this network. You mentioned do Washington I? Post. You I, do. <laughs> didn't um, I say all kinds of nice things about you? Uh, no, some other journalists here. You did give a, a shout out to Kara Corte and some other uh, right. reporters. But but you say you take direct aim at, at the media for not I, asking the questions that you think need look, to be asked. How do you on this New Deal idea? How can you have the U.S. government in any way involved with the media and direct funding when trust in the government is so low in this country okay. and trust in media is low? Okay, two issues, two separate issues. Number one, what I say in the book is that, look, I have done a thousand interviews like I'm doing with you right now. And nobody has ever come up to me, not one reporter, <coughs> not you, not anybody else. I said, Bernie, mm -hmm. why are we spending twice as much on health care as any other country and yet we have 85 million uninsured or uninsured? How many programs on CBS, NBC, ABC had on why out we have a dysfunctional health care system? Does that have anything to do? I think Bernie should sometimes ask direct questions like to her. Be like, do you think health care should be public? As is the case in many of these, uh, many of these other social democratic countries. Do you think? Now, the reason why I say that is because like Jordan Peterson, for all of his fucking faults and failures, used to do this shit very well. Right. Like he would just like ask direct questions, refuse to ever answer, refuse to ever answer uh, a direct question back, of course. But like that makes for wonderful agitprop. You know what I mean? Bernie uh, destroys like hysterical face the nation interviewer. Right. Uh, he needs to be more contentious. She just say, I'm a journalist. I'm impartial. Yeah. And then it'd be like, OK, you're a journalist. That's fine. But as a human being. You're a mother, you have parents, you're a daughter, you're a sister. As a human being, do you think it's okay that we pay while healthcare? With who owns the major networks. Bernie, what are you going to do about income and wealth inequality? Do you demand, why are billionaires paying an effective tax rate lower mm -hmm. than working class people? Don't want to ask me those questions. Okay. No so one that's, tells us the questions to ask. Here. I understand that, but there's a culture in the media. No one tells people who work for me not to vote for Donald Trump. Surely, I will guarantee you they don't. I never tell them to do it. But then there's another issue, and that is that we, a totally different issue. We are seeing media deserts in this country. Mm -hmm. Local newspapers are going out of business. So people get no news from their city yeah. council, their it's school a board. Real issue. How do you deal with that? And the reason they're going out of business is private sector companies can't make money anymore mm -hmm. because of the you know, radical transformation of, of media. What happens? Do people not know what's going on in their city? Mm -hmm. How do you deal with that? Well, in European countries, what they do is they do it through a nonpartisan public funding of media. Mm -hmm. I think that's an idea that we should explore. So um, I'm told we're running out of time. But I'm just getting warmed up, Margaret. I'm having fun. <laughs> But I have to ask you, you're going on tour to promote this book, It's Okay to Be Angry About Capitalism. And you're here talking about it. I understand we're not the bad guys you're, you're describing in the book when it comes to the media. But tickets for your tour apparently are selling for $95 no. on Ticketmaster, which is— Oh, let's go! Woo! Woo! Let's go! You say you're a socialist, and yet here you are. Yet here you fucking are, you old bitch. You fucking want to make old. money, dude. What the fuck is that? Here you are again. I bet you fucking live in not one, not two, but even a third fucking log cabin that was passed down to you by your wife's parents. Fake ass socialist, dude. Why are you a whole ass socialist right in front of me Wearing clothes. Why are you not wearing an old-timey, hollowed-out barrel with two leather straps on the fucking shoulders and running around going, I'm so poor, please, sir, can I have some fucking more? Why? Why are you not doing that? And then whenever you say that, people go, uh... Actually, there's a difference between, like, being incredibly poor versus living in the lap of luxury. No, fundamentally, the idea is not about whether you're making a purchase or not. The, the argument doesn't come from, like, oh, I've decided 
This is the barrier for socialism. The argument is literally, you're a socialist and you have, you consume goods. You seem personally invested in this one. Yes, of course, I'm personally invested in this because I'm rich, okay? And not only that, but also, more importantly than that, it is not an effective fucking tool. It is literally a right-wing propaganda talking point that a lot of other dumbass leftists eat up hook, line, and sinker, okay? It's stupid, and it's self-defeating. We should stop advocating for socialism being a fucking poverty cult, okay? Now, of course, in the case of Bernie Sanders, okay, I doubt that he's, like, personally made the tickets 95. I'm sure it's a ticket master's issue, okay? There's no fucking shot. Oh, <sighs> anyway, um, let's see what he says. Accused of anti-competitive behavior. You know that some of your Democrats are criticizing them. Aren't you benefiting yourself no, from not. this system first that you're all, trying to dismantle? First of all, those decisions are made totally by the publisher and the bookseller. I think there's one case where in one place here in Washington, po uh, politics and pros and independent books are charging some tickets. Most of them, I think, are $40, $50, and you get a book as well. So if you want to come, you're going to have to pay 40 bucks. I'll throw in the book for free. And we're doing a number of free uh, events, but I don't make a nickel out of these things at all. But you're okay doing business with Ticketmaster? No, not particularly, but that's, again, I have nothing to do with that. That is... You but again, he, but like, it's out of his power. It's so stupid. You design a system that is inherently exploitative, and motherfuckers are trying to use the tools that the system offers them, okay? And you still go, ah, oh, fuck you, dude. You're fucking hypocritical. It's like, what are you supposed to do? Yeah, no, I, uh, the only ethical way to advocate for my new book is by not even writing it on a piece of paper that was uh, unfairly extracted from the third world, but instead yell the parts of the book in, uh, you know, subway stations. I'm going to yell different excerpts from my book for free at the, at the metro station down the street. It's the only ethical way for me to disseminate information. The fuck? The fuck is this? It's so dumb. And people never give in to these people. When people try to go, oh, well, actually, you could have used a more ethical means. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. No. Nah. Bullshit. It's fucking bullshit. You don't give a fuck about this. You literally consume insanely unethical shit on a daily fucking basis. That's why I get very frustrated about, like, consumer-led advocacy. That's why... I I get frustrated by this kind of boycott. That's why I get frustrated at the top of the hour when I serve you a three-minute ad break and you go, oh my God. How can I avoid the top of the hour ad breaks? Well, okay, I'll tell you how. By subscribing for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. Okay? By connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account where you get one free Prime subscription a month. <laughs> You can also get gifted a sub if you're lucky. Here's the three-minute ad break now. <laughs> okay, look, look. The ticket master one was a conservative tweet. Holy fuck, how are they running with that? A pre-sale for the tickets to a Bernie Sanders event at the Anthem in D.C. is currently live on Ticketmaster for a price between $35 to $95. You could have at least not used Ticketmaster, one of the world's worst corporate monopolies, to make the whole thing less ironic. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. No, you're right. Same concept. Same concept. And, it, and every single time we talk about, every single time we talk about boycotts, immediately the first thing that like supposedly anarchist uh, uh, Twitter users jump on is BDS. You don't support, don't you support BDS? Of course, I do support BDS, okay? Of course. But BDS is not just B, okay? There's D and there's a S there, okay? There's a tangible ultimate goal in the background of that. There's divestments. There's boycotts. There's a clear and calculable, tangible goal, albeit, of course, impossible to um, oftentimes impossible to avoid. Unlike the top of the hour ad break, which I'm serving to you right now, by the way. I totally forgot to run it. I'm running it now.
the entire purpose of a monopoly is that it's it's not something you can avoid. It's so stupid. Like, you can't make this argument and then literally say it's a corporate monopoly because this is a self-defeating argument. You just immediately defeated your argument, right? You said that, and then you called it a monopoly, so you understand it. And the same goes for Twitch. The same goes for Amazon. You can say, Hassan, this is a self-serving argument. It is self-serving because I do try to be as ethical as I possibly can and also simultaneously educate you on how shit works. Okay? Why are you so against making money? Just curious. First of all, I'm not. The irony, the irony of Red Scare propaganda, the saddest part about Red Scare propaganda, I mean, not the saddest, but one of the, one of the sad foreseeable consequences of Red Scare propaganda is quite literally this idea that like socialists are against making money. That's not the case. It's literally about making as much money that you yourself are generating. It's about advocating for your own output, being able to make more from how much you deliver for the company. That is at the f heart of socialism. It's the heart of Marxism, okay? I know that's a fake Just Curious Andy. It doesn't matter, though. You need to understand this is important, okay? I tell people this all the time. Stop letting your bosses steal from you. And that is at the heart of socialism, which is hilarious because it's not about, like, fucking, I don't know, cutting the output across the board and, and saying that every single person... The ticket, master, the ticket master tickets especially in cities because they fucking own every venue that would host as many people would even see him, which is exactly what he's trying to fix. Yeah, exactly. I love when you explain stuff like this because I have friends that legit say stuff like, say stuff like Bernie owns three houses, but AOC sells expensive sweatshirts. Exactly. AOC is not even selling the sweatshirts for her own financial gain. She's selling the expensive sweatshirts that are expensive because it is domestically manufactured, labor union produced sweatshirts, okay? So that's number one. And number two, she's selling it for campaign funds, okay? As far as Bernie's three houses, we've, uh, we've dealt with that many times over as well. Bernie a landlord? No then shut the fuck up. I hate it. It's because Bernie is hypocritical and so is his coalition. Yes, exactly. Typical Bernie bro shtick when conservative talking point attack HRC. Okay, when attacking Bernie, not okay. Exactly why he'll never win. Dude, I love you, man. I hope you never change. One day Hillary Clinton will be president, okay? Don't worry about it. Oh. <sighs> Imagine being uh, the, the main, you know, neoliberal figurehead and still, and controlling the entire fucking Democratic Party and still not being able to defeat Donald Trump, a person that you originally thought in the primaries would be the most favorable opponent to you. You know, get fucking wrecked, I guess. Bernie is not hypocritical. And also, you do sound like a Trump supporter in this regard whenever you say stuff like this. It's okay for Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump to be hypocritical because they're honest about their awful behavior is so stupid. Oh, they're just, they're capitalists, so it's okay. They can get away with, like, exploiting their fucking workers. Okay, got it. Thank you. It's the saddest thing, and it extends to corporations. Most people expect the corporation and the corporate structure to be undemocratic. They know that that's undemocratic and they think that that's the only way that it's supposed to be. So they never think about anything else. They're like, well, you know, the, my boss is fucking me, but I know he's supposed to fuck me. He knows he's fucking me. He, can, he says he's fucking me. He can just like deliver sweet nothings to me and it doesn't even matter. But God forbid the, the moral value that I have associated with what the left represents, even if it doesn't represent uh, the left at all, even if it's like antithetical to Marxism, even it doesn't matter because I've been told and other people also just as stupid as me have been told and believe that that is what the left is. It's supposed to be a poverty cult. You're supposed, you can't have nice things. You can't, if you're leftist, you can't have nice things. You have to live like Jesus Christ. Okay. I don't give a fuck. 
about those ideas. I, I don't care. I like nice things. I buy nice things. When I was poor and I didn't have a lot of money, I wanted to buy nice things. And now that I have the capacity to do so, I'm going to fucking do it. Suck my dick. You know what I mean? Get mad at me all you want. I don't give a shit. Like, your life is not going to get better if I stop streaming and just, like, take all the capital I've accumulated and fucking dump it into real estate. You know? Workers' power is at Hasanabi, our point of production, our jobs, not at our point of consumption, shopping. This is socialism versus liberalism all day. Exactly. Exactly. You're not a socialist unless you wear a barrel and suspenders and drink out of a big jug. You're not a capitalist unless you wear a top hat and carry on a big bag with a dollar sign on it. This is basic Marxism. Yeah. It's the funniest part about this is that like, like all the motherfuckers that come in here and defend capitalism, not a single one of you have a deed to the factory. And yet here you are defending capitalism like your life depends on it. Bitch, you don't even have capital. Fuck you mean. No, your hand-me-down Honda Civic is not technically capital. Okay. It's just not. Where's the deed to the fucking factory? Don't come at me and be like, well, you're talking to a future landlord, sir. No. You're a wantrepreneur, okay? You got nothing. So how about, at least for the time being, advocate for your class position. Leave being a class trader to me, okay? If you personally think I'm a part of the bourgeois, I'm a capital-owning coalition. Just, you know, I'll be a class trader for you, okay? You defend your own track. Uh, you, you defend your own class. How about that? I don't give a fuck about morality, checking people, spreading leftist propaganda or ideas. If it furthers the cause, I don't care. Leftists want to play a game with self-imposed nerfs, steal, cheat, and lie. No, that also goes a little far, too. You know, like, at, at what point is it, like, unethical? You know what I mean? And you also open yourself up to, you open yourself up to, like, being tarnished and your reputation being tarnished by people who want to not just tarnish your reputation, really, but they want to tarnish the ideas that you're spreading. Do you get what I'm saying? And you open yourself up to that line of attack. I mean, I fucking do my very best not to uh, behave in a manner inconsistent, given everything uh, that is designed around literally living a certain way. And yet, people still get mad. They make shit up. As the Southern Baptists say, it will damage your witness. Yeah, it's just so sad to see fucking people like Bernie Sanders. I mean, fuck, fuck shitting on me. Like, I mean, that's going to happen regardless. I'm a Twitch streamer, okay? Like, Twitch streamers live uh, very fortunate lives, okay? Very, very fortunate lives. So understandably... A lot of other posters on the internet, on other platforms that want to do the same thing and want to make money off of their posting will, of course, get mad at the posters that are making money off their posting, not realizing that, like, they are doing the same shit, just not as successfully. Thank you for being so brave. No, I'm not. I'm not brave at all. What the fuck? Did I accidentally fucking mod you while I was, like, literally? Okay, I did not mod you. <sighs> anyway you wrote a book probably be the same process mm -hmm. so you have to operate within the system i do is what you write a book a major publisher etc etc senator sanders 
Thank you very much. She didn't, at least she didn't follow through because like she didn't have enough time. But she would have probably followed through on the whole thing by being like, well... We're now joined did by Vermont Did you have Senator. to go with that publisher? Did, could you not go with a different publisher? You know what I mean? Which is usually what uh, the second follow-up is. Which, of course... Um, it, it's just like, there is no reason you can't win. You, you just, there is no argument there. The argument is bu built on bullshit, a bullshit ass premise.